Hi guys, welcome back to the Bakersfield Museum of Art. My name is Curtis, and for today's project, I want to show you a really fun and easy way to make a seasonal greeting card that I think that you and your uh, friends will really enjoy. Now for this particular project, we're going to be creating a few stencils. Now if you're not uh, familiar with what a stencil is, it's pretty much a shape that you cut out of paper and use that remaining paper as a, as a guide to create your image. Um, this was really uh, inspired by the work of Marion Osborne Cunningham and her work in screen printing. And before we get started with our project, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Now we've actually spoken about Marion Osborne Cunningham before in previous um, art project videos, but if you're unfamiliar with her, she's really a big reason as to why the Bakersfield Museum of Art exists. Here's a little bit of her history, and then we'll talk more about what we intend to do today. Marion Osborne Cunningham was born in South Bend, Indiana on May 29, 1908. The Osborne family moved west shortly after Marion was born and settled in Bakersfield, California. From Bakersfield High School, she attended Santa Barbara Junior College, followed by art studies at Stanford University, Art Students League in New York City, and the California School of Fine Arts. Cunningham lived and worked in San Francisco during her adult life. Becoming well known as a pastel artist in the early 1930s, she soon branched out to other art forms such as serigraph and painting. She would be heavily influenced by her surroundings in San Francisco as well as her travels to South America. Marion Osborne Cunningham died unexpectedly of a brain tumor while in New York City on March 25, 1948. In honor of her, her parents would establish the Cunningham Memorial, Memorial Art Gallery in 1956. This would later become the Bakersfield Museum of Art, which we know and love today. This untitled work is an example of Marion Cunningham's silk screening. Using a series of stencil-like screens, she is able to apply multiple layers of colors and shapes to create this image. For today's project, we will be using similar methods to create our image, although we will be using a different medium as the Screen printing process typically uses ink, and we will be using a medium that is easier to work with. For today's project, you will need a pencil, some scissors, crayons, colored pencils, or soft pastels, some tape, and colored construction paper. To begin our project, we want to sketch out some simple shapes that have to do with this current season. These can be really be anything that reminds you of winter or the uh, festivities going on. We want to sketch these shapes fairly large as we will be cutting them out later on. You can also download and print out the stencil worksheet that is provided on the webpage hosting this video. Once you have several shapes sketched, you can move on to gently cutting them out. This can be a delicate process, so if you're a younger student, you may want to ask an older student for help. As you can see, I've sketched out several things that remind me of this winter season, including a conifer tree, stars, some holiday lights, and a snowflake. The shapes that you're cutting out and removing from your paper Go ahead and set those aside because we'll be able to use them later on. If at all possible, it's a good idea to use a thicker piece of paper to create your stencil worksheet. Now as you cut out the shapes on your stencil, you'll want to go ahead and apply a piece of tape to those cut lines. This will help us later on when we're actually using the stencil to make our piece. So now, with our stencil cut out and our stencil shapes from the paper uh, set off to the side, we can move on to the next step by selecting a piece of brightly colored construction paper and folding it in half. This will create our card, which we will now use our stencil to decorate. It's a good idea to take a moment and think about how you want to use your stencil when applying it to your card. Which shapes will go where? Now that I have my stencil in place, 
I have selected a dark green crayon to gently color in the inside of the stencil. I don't have to worry about going over the edges of the stencil because that won't show up on my paper. I can also use multiple colors, like the leaves of the tree as opposed to the wood of the tree. I want to make sure that I'm pressing firmly on the stencil to make sure that it doesn't shift. I want my stencil images to be nice and clean. Again, I'm using multiple colors for the single stencil as I want my holiday lights to have uh, some variety. A very nice thing about using a stencil is that you can use it in multiple ways in multiple locations. You can use different colors to make each use of the stencil unique. I've opted to use crayon for my project as it's a soft medium and won't wear too harshly on the stencil I've created. Using colored pencils or soft pastels has the same benefit. Another great thing about using a stencil is that after you've created it, you can use it over and over again, creating more pieces of artwork rather quickly. As you create your piece, think about what this time of year means to you. Do you and your family have different holiday traditions? Is there special food that you eat? Or are there special decorations that you put around your house? If there are, take that inspiration and apply it to the piece that you're creating. As you continue work on your card, just know that you don't have to stop with stenciling. I've opted to add more decoration to the tree below. I've added tinsel, as well as some ornaments to it. Now I'd like to show you a use for those shapes that you cut out earlier. If you hold the shape against the paper and pressing it firmly, try coloring around the, the edges of the shape. This will create a silhouette of the shape that you can fur further decorate. With the shapes from your stencil in place, I would encourage you to decorate the card further, making sure to fill up any empty space there may be. I've gone ahead and opted to add some snow, as well as some glittering light off of my stars, as well as my light bulbs. To finish the card, I've written Season's Greetings in big letters across the middle. I also plan to open the card and write a note before giving it to a friend. So, what do you think? I certainly hope you had fun creating this seasonal greeting card, and I hope you uh, continue to make more of them and give them to your loved ones. It certainly does make the, um, the season special. I really hope you join us again next time. Thank you so much, and have a great day. If interested in helping to restart the arts here in California, the Bakersfield Museum of Art encourages you to visit californiansforthearts.org to see what you can do to help.